Hey everybody, it's Austin Ward for Letterman Row back with another Buck IQ. We've got the former Ohio State uh, tackle Reed Fragel. So you know we're breaking down some work in the trenches. And Reed, this is a guy that I think you told me about back in the summer to keep an eye on. Wyatt Davis. He gets his first start, has to go in uh, to replace Demetrius Knox in a huge setting with a championship on the line. Uh, that seems like a pretty daunting way to make your first start, but he he really stepped up and answered the bell. Yeah, it was really exciting to see him get this as like his first big test on this big of a stage. <laughs> Um, I thought he did a phenomenal job. There's really maybe a handful of plays I would say that he could correct, but obviously as a younger guy, those are going to happen. Um, but it's the best way to learn, in my opinion, is to get thrown into the fire and see those mistakes happen on film and come back and correct them next season in the bowl game. What's the key for a guy? He, he was so highly touted coming out of high school. Offensive line is a difficult position to play, as you can attest. It's physical, it's mentally taxing, maybe more so than people give it credit <laughs> for. Uh, what is it that, how do you turn the corner? How do you become a guy who goes from, uh, prospect to an actual starter in a Big Ten team? Well, I think you kind of have to humble yourself when you come in as a you know five-star recruit out of high school, especially nowadays. The media kind of has a way to pump you up before you get there. So it's a lot for a young 18, 19-year-old kid to take in and then get thrown into this high-caliber program and say, well, you're good, but you're not good enough to basically start. You have to earn your stripes, mm -hmm. basically. And I think that's a, that's a hard thing for a lot of guys to grasp. Uh, but to be there this spring and to see why it kind of come out of his shell and play angry just in the run game was, I remember watching this kid and thinking like, who the hell is this kid? He's, <laughs> he's playing mean out there. Yeah. So um, to see him put it all together now and see his pass pro come together, uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. And uh, it was great to see in the Big Ten Championship. Might be hard to get Wyatt Davis out of that lineup now moving forward. He'll definitely be there in the Rose Bowl when the Buckeyes take on Washington in uh, Pasadena on January 1st. But before we get to that next game, look back at his last one. Reed Fragle's going to break it all down here on Buck IQ. So let's roll the tape. Against the Wolverines. First down. J.K. Dobbins in the backfield. And they'll give it to him running right. Dobbins crossing the 40. Stop block. All right, Reed, so we talked about this big stage. The opening drive. Wyatt Davis is out there with Dwayne Haskins, J.K. Dobbins. Feeling some nerves, I'm sure. Uh, one way to get him out is to do a little run blocking. Absolutely. You see uh, right here, you see him and Isaiah come together in a combo block where he's able to just kind of bury that three tech. And that's, I mean, no better feeling out the gate <laughs> for a guy on a stage like this to get the nerves out is take it out of the double team. Beautiful combo block up to second level. Um, it was just a great thing to see off the bat. Does Wyatt get uh, credit for the pancake here if there's a combo block? Cause I don't know, Prince kind of peels off at the end. Like, I don't, uh, how do you score that in, in the offensive line meeting room? I think Prince got the hip there. That might be a half and half, <laughs> okay. half pancake each, but uh, the finish there by Wyatt is awesome. And it seems like that was kind of a big theme early on is that uh, Prince was there to provide some, you know, help some of those combo blocks early on just to maybe get his feet wet a little bit. Yeah, that's something that I'm sure he was out there talking to to Wyatt throughout the whole game. If there was any, ever any questions, um, he knew he had Isaiah's help there as an experienced tackle next to him, which is always a phenomenal thing to have as a young guy coming in there. Get big plays against him. Second and three. Haskins pumping, looks back side, connects underneath Campbell again, and another first down for the Buckeyes. So we keep the focus here on this opening drive, just the first, the first starting drive of Wyatt Davis' career, and then uh, Ohio State finds something a little going in the pass protection, this quick hitting passing game here. Yeah, one thing I liked about Wyatt throughout this game and his pass pro, which I didn't really get a chance to see that much of during spring, so it was great to see here in this game. He's really sitting on his block well. He's allowing that defender to get into him and kind of pulls him in tight which allows him to then kind of drop back and use the kind of uh, the opponent's leverage against him um, and then obviously Prince coming in here to finish <laughs> off the job which you love to see. These, these two guys piling on here we saw this was actually flagged later in the game and yeah. I know you're not a big fan of that. No that was really tough to see um, <laughs> it's kind of just the way the game is going though they're coming kind of soft with the way that they handle uh, those kind of calls were, you know, I used to call this finishing a block, where right. now it's called unnecessary roughness. So <laughs> the game's just changing a little bit. you got to kind of be mindful of that, though. Just both a freshman and sophomore. Delayed handoff, and he goes nowhere. Uh, it wasn't always perfect for Wyatt Davis here as we continue on here later in the drive, and this is one that um, Greg's to draw in that film room. I'm sure he'll be pointing uh, to this one to try and get Wyatt Davis better, better and ready for that Rose Bowl. Easy for me to say. Yeah, this was... Uh, Kind of a basic TE stunt here. You'll see the tackle loop out, and Wyatt kind of sits on thinking he has him kind of sitting in his own stance. So he takes a shot, and with them, when that happens simultaneously, then loops around. Uh, as a guard, you got to know that your tackle is going to be there, sit back on, and uh, be ready for that end looping around there. But 
Um, this was just kind of a, a one-on-one play. It was, it was one of his maybe three mistakes I think I saw in pass pro, but um, he corrected it later on. Is this a matter of communication? Is it just you know maybe some nerves or not having the experience to go through and, and realize that it's going to be passed off to you? Or Yeah, what? there's there's a combo of things there. It could be lack of communication. I don't know what was set out there, but usually there's a go call uh, by the tackle when he sees that end loop around or he senses it, I guess, pre-snap. You can say alert, alert. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what was said, but the tackle will say go right when he sees that, and the guard is supposed to be positioned well enough to get back on that. So as you see, though, why it's a little bit leaning on that three-tack looping out to where he's unable to put that weight on that outside foot and uh, plant back for the end looping around. Empty backfield for the Big Ten. Player of the year, Dwayne Haskins. To throw it, looking, in trouble. Breaks the tackle. Haskins dancing. Throw. Ohio State would still be able to bounce back from this one and finish the drive in the end zone. Thanks largely to the work of Dwayne Haskins, yeah. but the offensive line at least kept him upright for some of these early uh, first few steps. Yeah, this play is just incredible by Dwayne, but uh, you only get a three-man rush here. You're able to take some shots as a lineman. I'd like to see why it start teeing off a little bit more guys like that right there. Mm -hmm. uh, but this play in general, though, is just amazing to see Dwayne work some magic back there. Is that you know the key for these offensive linemen? When, when a quarterback starts moving... That should be your opportunity to maybe go head hunt a little bit, right? Yeah, your head should be on a swivel right there. And um, with a quarterback back there like Dwayne, where he's more of a pocket passer, it's not going to happen as much. So maybe that's why they're not really looking for it when it happens. Um, but when I was back there and we'd have Braxton going around <laughs> like that, you'd always be ready and licking your chops for something like this to happen. This was the golden opportunity right here. He'll, he'll, he'll probably look back on film, right, and say, man, I wish I would have given this guy a little bit more. He, yeah. You can see he's ready for he's it. He's ready for it right there. But, yeah, that's like one of those things I was saying where as he watches the films, he, he corrects his mistakes from this game moving forward. Um, I'm sure Coach Stud will say something about that. You know, take your shot when you can get it. Uh, but it was great to see him come, put it all together, though, for this big game. Something there to keep in mind for Wyatt Davis now. He's, he'll make his second start for Ohio State in the Rose Bowl. Reed Fregel will, will be watching. We'll have a lot more offensive line stuff to break down after New Year's Day. He'll be back with us at Letterman Row. He's Reed Fregel. I'm Austin Ward. We'll see you next time on Buck IQ.